Hey gamer, I'm Wyatt, also known as Musty, and I'm the creator of the Musty Flip. Sure, it's gonna be dangerous, the Musty, oh my! Uh, now that 3v3 is finished. <laughs> he has to wait for flakes. Flakes, Musty Flick, and it's oh. good! Everyone talks about it. That's called a Musty Flick. The Musty Flick? The Musty Flick. The Musty Flick. Musty Flick. The Musty! Yeah! Oh! Musty, have that, mate. You're, you're finished. Okay, I'll play with Musty again. Yeah. It's using the pro scene. See, okay, only on 20, but we'll be passing via that back right corner. Go! Oh! Musty! Freestylers use it. Oh my god, the Musty oh to the corner is just, so just, good! Just, oh yeah, my good. god! <laughs> Memes are made about it. <laughs> and I even made a career out of it. Twenty-four thousand viewers, dude. What the heck? People who barely play Rocket League know about it. It's everywhere. But how did it get to this point? It was back in 2006. I was only five years old, and that's when I picked up my first soccer ball and fell in love with the game. I was only five. I've always been passionate about soccer my entire life. Uh, I started at Upward Academy, I think it was called. It was like a church program when I was five years old. And uh, I just remember always being like a really competitive person. I, I used soccer as an outlet for that competitive nature, essentially, and played for nearly 10 years. And I always wanted to be the very best I possibly could. Just putting in work, not only at practice, but before practice, after practice, maybe watching a little bit of film, but always getting touches on the ball, like whenever I could. When I played soccer or, or, or football for those in Europe and everywhere else in the world, my, my sincerest apologies, I played left back or right back. I was like a late wimmer growing up, so I wasn't that tall compared to my opponents. And I don't know, but trust me, I I had all my opponents unlocked. Like you could not get past me. Even though I don't look intimidating, you're, you're not getting past me, but. I think it's time we head out, man. I've just had an addictive personality in my entire life. And like I said, I applied it to soccer and I kind of have to be like really, really honed in on this like one or two things at once. But those one or two things, I'm gonna strive to be the very best. But then I got a concussion and it completely shifted my life. During my time playing soccer growing up, Shortly after I got a concussion, I was introduced to Rocket League. So who showed you Rocket League? Uh, my older brother named Zane. He's two years older than me. When I was a, I think in eighth grade or ninth grade, it might've been during summer. He, he showed it to me because a lot of the people on his soccer team uh, started playing it. And as someone who's played FIFA my entire life, all the soccer players are always hyped about FIFA. And for like the whole team to be hyped about another game, like that's how I knew I should try it out. Uh, and when I first downloaded Rocket League, I was very terrible at it. But I, I did really like the game because unlike FIFA, I, I know it's kind of updated now where you have more control. A lot of times there I would like pass it or try to do a certain play, but it would it would do the wrong thing. You would pass it to the defender, you would pass it to the wrong guy. But in Rocket League, what I noticed uh, when I first started playing, even just to do like a front flip, you can click like four buttons, use a little bit of boost, start a little bit of air roll to get like the exact pass you want. It, it's almost as if you're playing a sport and not a video game. I was like, you know, I gotta make my own Xbox account. And me and my other brother, we we kept like refreshing the auto-generated name until someone made me laugh or someone was funny. It's like an ongoing joke I have with my brother. It was like musty cow 2346. And I just thought it was the most random funny set of numbers and stuff so I just cleaned it up and I just made it a musty cow but I didn't really start playing a lot until my brother taught me how to aerial and I was actually playing on this Xbox right over here the very first Xbox it started out on and this exact room is where everything started and on that huge TV I, I, I did a bunch of research and discovered maybe I have a little bit of input lag I never spent any of my birthday money so I spent it pretty much all on once and got like a 900 to like a thousand dollar PC. I figured out how to build it. I downloaded Rocket League on there. Freaking it won't, it won't launch on Steam! 
it is a lot easier. I can't lie. The the input lag, especially on on a good monitor with a good PC, very little input lag. I remember going up like a few ranks, and yeah, PC is a lot easier. So when I switched from Xbox to PC, I naturally started to take things more seriously. And I'm the type of guy to like look up tutorials and stuff. And one guy who kept coming up was Squishy Muffins. So I'd watch his videos. I would literally like watch his videos in 0.5 speed sometimes and uh, constantly be playing it back to understand the mechanics he's going for and the decisions he's making and all sorts of things like that. And seeing the best players at the time, which at the time Squishy was like one of like five people uploading Rocket League videos. One of the very best in the world. So I would study his gameplay now I wanted to be like him one day. Yet somehow, I stumbled across something. So at this point in time, I was only 16 years old. I was working at Culver's and I was basically playing Rocket League whenever I wasn't at school or working. Like I said, with the addictive personality, you know, I, I was playing like before school, after school. I was waking up at like 4.30 in the morning. Uh, just to do like two hours of free play before school, doing my homework on the school bus. And in my time playing Rocket League, I discovered a weird way to flick the ball, so I posted it to Reddit. I downloaded Reddit when I was on vacation, and right when I got back from vacation, I saw all these people posting like magnificent clips and I was only probably like the equivalent of plat rank at the time but I wanted to be just like them so I started posting any clip that I thought was good uh looking back on it these were terrible clips but maybe like three or four times a week just any shot I thought was cool and as I naturally got better the clips would get better and I started getting a little bit of traction on reddit well so yeah I started to get decent at the game so I'd naturally get maybe a few hundred upvotes if I did like a, something cool and even back then, if you had a flip reset, that's like a clip and a half right there, so. I was trying to learn the mechanics of the game, and I noticed, like, leaning my car in weird ways would make it flip in ways that I didn't fully understand. And, uh, I kind of figured it out with the ball in my car, posted it, and I just, it was more of like, hey, do you guys understand what's going on? Like, is this something that could actually be useful? And a lot of people were like, holy crap, we have never seen this before. I, I replied to a comment, someone was like, bro, this is insane. What do you want to call it? And I was like, the, the musty flick, almost as a joke. And people were like, LOL. But yeah, people were like, wanted to call it the dolphin flick, the, the pooper scoop or something. Everyone was coming up with these weird names for it. What really allowed it to be called the musty flick though wasn't me. It was these higher level players that were able, they saw the post and they, they were able to replicate it and do it in the game uh, in the following days after the post. And they titled their post, the musty flick. And then the term eventually kind of caught on that way. Then as time passed, uh, the Musty Flick got a lot more popular, so I decided I needed to start posting YouTube videos. I wanted to play Rocket League competitively at the time, so I had a team. And my teammates at the time, Rob the Goat and Darkness, were like, Hey, you're the Musty Flick guy. You should probably make a YouTube channel. So I did. At the time, I was already an avid Redditor. I was on Reddit a lot. But once I started my YouTube channel, my goal was to get some of my audience on Reddit to kind of go over to YouTube. And the way I did that was with, through a series called Musty Minutes, because I would already post highlights on Reddit. So I was like, hey, if you guys want to check out these highlights with, with some music on and maybe some extra clips, click this link. Self-promo on Reddit is like really, really looked down upon. So I, I, I kept it like low key. I still posted some clips to Reddit or reply to someone, but hey, you know, I have some more stuff here if you wanna check it out. And then I started posting those musty minutes more on YouTube and they probably have a decent amount of views now, but at the time, you know, maybe it was getting 50 to 200 to 300 views max. Those were numbers I was, I was very proud of though. Those are like, that's, that's good for a new channel. I had a lot of clips stored on my hard drive, so I, I sent them all to an editor. He still posts today, the Rocket League Effects channel. They made me a montage called Musty Momentum. And that was like my, my very best clips at the time. You guys can go back uh, if you want to watch, but that was another early banger on the channel that did pretty well. And uh, the very first video you'll see on my channel though, is it's called just Musty Flick. But at the time it was called like, you know, Xbox game capture 24936. And the reason I actually posted that is because I didn't know how to get it from my Xbox to a GIF format. So I, I uploaded it as unlisted so my friend could see it. But I just kept it on the channel and changed the name to Musty Flick. Uh, I don't know, I figured it was funny. And now it has like millions of views. It's actually 
kind of insane. But the first video to pop off was a tutorial. I got like a blue snowball microphone, no webcam. I had no idea how to talk on camera. I was like scared, but I just wrote down what I wanted to say, little bullet points, and I was like, hey guys, uh, Here's the Musty Flick. Yo, what's going on guys? Uh, I've gotten lots of requests to make a tutorial for the Musty Flick, so I decided to finally make one. At the time that the video got like eight to 10,000 views in the first three or four days, and then after a week, it was like near like 40 or 50,000 views, and bro, I I've gone viral, like I'm a YouTuber, I'm, I'm doing it. And that is kind of where it all started. From here on, I was researching every day about the YouTube algorithm, learning thumbnails, just grinding editing, and I was so motivated. And like any new channel, a lot of the videos kind of flopped, but I had a few that did pretty well. And finally, I made my first dollar from YouTube. Then a month later, my first $100 from YouTube. And I remember just being like ecstatic, like holy crap, I was showing my mom, I can make money now, it was sick. But the real turning point was the 7v1 series. How did you come up with the idea for the 7v1 series? I stole it. Thanks. <laughs> There's already Johnny Boy. I think he was uploading like one pro versus two diamonds from his chat or things like that. And I was like, bro, there, there's a whole like unsaturated market here. Uh, Cause I got a PC, I, I got decent at the game where I was grand champ, which at the time was the very highest rank in the game. And I had a decent following on YouTube where I could find like four bronzes and get three of my friends who didn't play Rocket League. So that's a total of seven bronzes. That was my first video to reach like a hundred thousand views. And that at the time was like exhilarating. No matter what people are gonna hate on stuff. It was one of my first like YouTube videos where I was doing like a concept. Um, I think I, I had unlimited boost or something. So I, I did it again without boost, like prove that I was able to win again. Then I decided to go up to silver because obviously I won against bronzes I went up to silver I did gold a few times but I just kept going up until I would lose and it made for kind of an entertaining series and I was doing a charity stream on twitch and mini mentor from the side bin he went into my stream and donated a thousand dollars to this charity I, I didn't watch the side bin that much I'm not gonna lie but I, I found him on Instagram I just thanked him hey bro like I really appreciate this it means a lot he responded to me he's like no problem hit hit me up if you want to do any videos sometime uh, so they were kind of getting into Rocket League at that time I was like, hey, seven people in the Sidemen, you guys probably aren't that good at Rocket League. Me, I'm, I'm good at Rocket League. It would make a perfect banger for my channel. It'd be insane if we're able to do this. I remember he was like, hey, like, I'll ask the guys. And you know, obviously they all have to match their schedules. It's not like it's easy for them to do this video with this smaller YouTuber. And they, they didn't really get back with me. Maybe a week or two later, I put out a tweet putting $10,000 in the line on it because I was already making decent money from YouTube at this time. And there was lots of memes like talking to a brick wall. Like, yeah, they're, they're not going to see this little bro. Um, but they actually got back with me because they needed to do some Rocket League content at the time. Um, some maybe sponsored thing. And I was like, hey, like, let's do this 7v1 as well. And now that you guys are right here, like, let's do it. It'll take like 30 minutes. We did it. I, I did beat all seven of them, by the way. I remember KSI kept trying to demo me. Do something with it. Yes! Oh, oh, stop, bro. But it was very surreal to like be in a call with some of the biggest creators on the platform and yeah, one of one of my favorite videos on the channel. From here on, the game began to get more popular and so did my videos. But as my channel grew, a new goal of mine was to hit 1 million subscribers. So I've always been a big believer in like manifesting and whatever you want to call it, just I'm always a, a goal setter. And you can have a goal in your head, but when you write it down, or verbalize it, it kind of puts the thought into action. Now you have a game plan to follow the goal. My channel, A Musty Cow, will hit 1 million subs by January, f on January 1st, 2021. I didn't just do that, I wrote down a whole game plan. I was maybe around like two or 300,000 at the time. And I did the math, I you know, I need, needed to grow 700,000, so it's, I needed this much per month, this much per week, this much per day. I had that game plan all on paper, and I wanted to share with my audience. I know I wanted to be a mission, a movement. So I put it on Twitter. I made it my pinned tweet for the entire year. I called it Operation One Million. That eventually turned into a race with Sunless. I, Cause I was just doing this for myself. But Sunless is like, hey, I'm ahead of you right now. You're going faster than I am. Let's race to a million. Let's do it. I was so confident in myself. I was like, hey, I'm only doing it if you can put like a thousand dollar bet on it. We agreed on it. And that turned into 
the Musty versus Sunless race to a million subscribers. Sunless Khan and Musty are racing head to head. A race to one million subscribers. Who will take the race? Musty, flick your way to the subscribe button. Here's me staring at you for 10 seconds, waiting for you to subscribe. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to subscribe. Guys, the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Subscribe. Oh my God, okay. We just hit 1 million subscribers. Thanks for the uh, time gifted. Thank you so much, G Fuel. I love you guys. I love G Fuel. Thank you, thank, thank you everyone you. for all the gifted subs, man. Homeless Khan. $1,000 dono. Congrats, Mr. Cow. Sunless, thanks for the, the 1K, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. He, Sunless actually did it, dude. $1,000 from the Sunless Khan. And, and of course, I'll be giving that to one of you guys, but. Funded by Sunless. I felt like I was on top of the world. I finally made it. And I've seen all these YouTubers like hitting a million subscribers. I've seen the live streams, but now I was one of them. I felt like I had accomplished it all. But the crazy thing is, it was only just getting started. On September 23rd, 2020, Epic Games made Rocket League free to play. And because of this, Rocket League saw a spike in new players that I had never seen before. Meaning I had experiences and saw numbers that I never could have dreamed of. I officially became the biggest Rocket League YouTuber surpassing John Sandman. I became the sub for NRG. I got a mansion in LA and got to meet a lot of Rocket League friends in real life and hosted a party. I became the first Rocket League YouTuber to hit 2 million subscribers. I met Squishy when we were in Sweden. Uh, he was my biggest inspiration and I met him in real life. Rocket League themselves rated me on Twitch. People started recognizing me in public, asking for pictures like at the gym and restaurants and stuff. I bought my own house at 22. I got to play on a Rocket League LAN stage in front of thousands of people. And so many more crazy experiences that I can't even fit into this video. All leading up to now. All right, you guys may be wondering what's next. And for that, I'm focusing a lot of my efforts right now on my second channel where I do exclusively real life content, similar to what you're watching right now, actually. Um, the Rocket League channel, when you're watching this on, it's not going anywhere. I just did a huge video on, on the second channel, retiring my parents. Very big moment for me. And I wanna share that with you guys. So if you guys wanna check that out, you can click somewhere on the screen at the end of the video, but that's about it, man. I'm putting 50-50 on both channels and that's what's next for me. I just think it's crazy that six years ago, I was just a kid sitting in my room making Reddit posts. I somehow stumbled across a new Rocket League mechanic, and years later, I'm living in life I never would have dreamed of. Turns out, the musty flick and a stupid game where you play soccer with cars was the greatest thing to ever happen to me.